My name is Mike DeRussia and I'm a Lock and Dam operator here at Lock and Dam number one. We have paperwork that we have to fill out with every lock that comes in. And so right now I'm just filling that out. That way we keep track of our tonnage. We put it in what we call an Omni system, and that goes down to St. Louis, and roughly anybody that's in, this, you know, in the Corps of Engineers can go ahead and access that and can find out where any towboat is at any given time, you know, in what pool. They can keep track of stuff, and they can also find out what, what their load is as far as, like now with the Sheely barge here, they mainly push gravel, sand, class five, uh, rock, that type stuff. My name is Terry Flickiger. Uh, I'm up at this lock right now for uh, four months on a developmental assignment. I'm the equipment repairman and I also fill in to lock tow bolts when we're short-handed. I've been a lock and dam operator uh, since around 96. Been on the, been on the river my whole life. So was uh, my grandfather started taking us boys out at a young age fishing. And uh, my grandfather also worked for the Corps and uh, was an equipment repairman at Lock 4 for 24 years. And then my uh, grandpa's brother was actually the captain of the Dredge Thompson. We monitor channel 14 and 16. All our main radio uh, traffic is done over channel 14, which is marine band. And what the tow boats do, and even pleasure boats do, is they'll go ahead and they'll give us a call when they're coming from our points of approach. Black one. And once they do call from that, we are dedicated to them. So if a pleasure craft were to come up or call us, or even ring our little buzzer at either end, they would go ahead and they would have to wait. Now, if the towboat was going down, we will lock pleasure craft down with them if it's okay with the towboat captain. There's a rope that goes down there and they pull that rope and it sends off like a doorbell. We go ahead and we talk to them via intercom over the telephone and let them know, ask them what they'd like and let them know the time frame. Six point four million gallons every time we raise or lower it. The roughly thirty-eight foot. We're roughly the second highest on the river. The highest is Upper St. Anthony, and they have roughly a forty or a forty-nine foot lift. And after uh, after us, I believe the next one would be down in Keokuk, Iowa. Ford came to the Corps of an Engineer and roughly said, if you build one lock and dam that has enough lift or drop that we can put a hydroelectric plant here, we'll go ahead and we'll provide you with the power you need, plus we'll build a factory up here. So it's kind of like a win-win situation for the core. Instead of having two, two lock and dams, they only had one, plus we got power for free, plus we brought jobs into the economy. It was designed mainly for twofold. One, to create a navigable channel for all towboats to use up and down the river, and also for flood control. Um, what we have above us is between, if you stay in between the black buoys, or they're actually green, but they call them blacks, and the red buoys, you always have nine foot of water, which is going to be plenty deep for any pleasure craft that's out there, and also for any towboat that's coming up. And if we did not have the towboat's going up here, this lock and dam wouldn't be here. 
That's our main purpose. The lock's main purpose is for tow boats. We have the different dams, like I said, is for flood control. Now, when we do have a flood, a lot of times we'll go ahead and we'll open all the gates. We have a list of priorities as far as who's coming through. Government vessels have the highest priority. Then after that, they have commercial passenger boats. Then after that, you have uh, the commercial boats like the Ganaway or any you know, working river tug. And then at the bottom of the list is uh, recreational craft. People have to understand that the tow boats are out here to work. They're not out here for pleasure. Lock one back. Good morning, northbound here. Monkey Runner got one rake load of coal, one box load of cement. Hi, we're just closing the gates after letting the Ganaway loose. What I'll do is get the chamber down and get ready for you. Thinking this will work out just like clockwork. Hi, right, we'll be standing by when you get here. Thank okay. you very much. You're welcome, lock one clear. What I'm doing right now is I'm dropping the chamber, and if you want to look right down here, you can actually see all the water that's coming out. Excuse me. Lock one, can I help you? All right, Chris, can you hold on so I can get up there and check your ID and bring you in? All right, wait one, please. We are also going to be going through a safety inspection today, and yours truly gets to do that. What this guy is going to do on the head here, the pole bolt, he's going to take that line and there's a traveling or a floating timber head on the lock wall here. And he's going to catch a line onto that. And uh, they'll also do that on the stern of the bolt. Uh, on the back end of the bolt, they'll also catch a line. The mate is uh, on the head of the tow. Uh, the deck hands basically assist the mate in uh, securing the, the barges to the lock wall and stuff. But the mate is the guy that uh, talks the captain or pilot into the lock chamber, lets him know how far he's off the wall, uh, how far it is till he can catch a pin. Now that we got this tow bolt locked, now we got to go put the paperwork into the computer. And we also call the next lock above us to let them know that they're going to have this uh, tow bolt with his barges pretty soon. Yeah, this is Russia down lock one. You've got the Ganaway heading your way with two loads. You have a great day.